Good evening. I'm Neil Warg from the Department of Justice, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to your citizenship celebration. Fulcher Moore Rove Galair on Seanach. Tonight is all about you, our newest Irish citizens. So firstly, let me say congratulations to you all. While we unfortunately can't gather in person, it's great to see so many faces smiling virtually. I also want to welcome all of those watching via our social media channels, which I know includes members of your families from across the world. If they would like to post a message of congratulations, they can do so using the hashtag Irish Citizen 2021. Tonight, we come to you live from EPIC, the Irish Emigration Museum, and you will soon be welcomed by Minister for Justice, Helen McEntee. You'll also have the opportunity to recite the Declaration of Fidelity to Our Nation and Loyalty to Our State with the assistance of Mr. Justice Brian McMahon. And we have some lovely new videos which you have shared with us and a couple of special pieces of music from Irish musician John Spillane. But now, in what has been a long-standing tradition with citizenship celebrations, here is the Garda Band to kick us off. A big thank you to the Garda Band for that. It really wouldn't be a citizenship celebration without them. It's now my pleasure to introduce our Minister for Justice, Helen McEntee. Thank you, Neil. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. Good evening to all of our new Irish citizens. Good evening to their family and friends tuning in from around the globe to join us on this really special occasion. You're all very welcome. It's wonderful to see so many of you, uh, albeit virtually on our screen. The joy and the pride that you have in being Irish is truly humbling to us, your fellow Irish citizens. And over the last few months, I've seen tweets, I've seen messages, I've had pictures sent to me of you holding your citizenship uh, letter, uh, and it's really exciting to see, so please keep those pictures coming. We wanted, and I wanted to make this a real celebratory event and to make it your event. So as Neil has said earlier, we'll be hearing later on from some of our newest citizens and what it means to them, to you, to be Irish. Even though this is different to our traditional citizenship ceremony, we've included some of the elements that make them really special 
and I'm delighted that the presiding officer from our ceremonies, Judge Brian McMahon, is here with us this evening. Uh, it really wouldn't be the same without Judge McMahon. And you've already heard the first musical performance from the Garda Band, with more to follow, of course. I know that becoming an Irish citizen is life-changing for each and every one of you. In fact, the last time that I addressed a citizenship event at the end of April, little did I know that my own life was about to change so soon. My son, Michael Shane, was so eager to be Ireland's newest citizen that he was born less than 24 hours later. So uh, it goes without saying these events will always have a special place in my heart. Uh, and hopefully tomorrow will be a less eventful day for me. Today, I expected to be in Killarney, uh, greeting you in person as you made the final important step in your journey towards Irish citizenship. Now, unfortunately, that wasn't possible as we all know COVID has changed so much in the way that we live our lives. But in some ways, even though we're not physically together and we are physically distanced, we've never been closer together. What we have endured over the last two years has really given greater meaning to our sense of kinship, to our sense of community and our sense of belonging, all of the things that we traditionally associate with being Irish. It's fitting that I'm speaking to you this evening from EPIC, uh, the Irish Immigration Museum in the heart of Dublin's Docklands. Here we are surrounded by the stories and sometimes tragedies of the thousands of Irish people who left these shores in search of a better life or indeed perhaps just to be able to live their life at all. So as people, we understand the life of an immigrant better than most. In fact, it's been said that we are a nation of immigrants. It's ingrained in our DNA and in the stories that we pass down to our families of family or friends who took the boat or who left Ireland to find work. In granting you your Irish citizenship, Ireland has made a commitment to you, a symbolic commitment that resonates with our nation's history and its people at home and abroad. A commitment that you will always have a home here with us, a place where you are accepted, a place where you are valued and indeed celebrated. When I wrote you on receiving your certificate of naturalisation, I told you that becoming an Irish citizen does not mean giving up your identity from your homeland. And I want to say that to you again tonight. We want you to bring your culture, your history and traditions from your homeland with you. By sharing them with us, Ireland is much richer for it. So on behalf of all of your fellow Irish citizens, thank you for choosing Ireland as the home of your heart and your future. I encourage you to engage fully and actively in all areas of Irish society. We will support you to realise your full potential. For those who are celebrating Christmas, I wish you a nullig honey of Galair, a very happy Christmas to all of you. I do hope Santa Claus will be kind to all of the children watching tonight, and indeed the adults too. As we look forward to the beginning of a new year, it's important to remember that the richness of our nation is not measured in our wealth, but in our people. You are now part of what makes us uniquely Irish. So let's embrace our differences, our diversities, that which brings us together, and continue to strengthen our bonds of friendship and fellowship as Irish citizens. Gormila Mahagwev, thank you. Thank you very much, Minister, and, and, and I'd like to say, I suppose, on behalf of all of the department, welcome back. We're delighted to have you back. It's now time for our first contribution from you, our newest citizens. Charlie Taylor, Taylor is originally from Aylesbury in North London. He now lives in Dublin and has an Irish daughter. When he was young, Charlie left school early and never felt motivated to go to university. But that changed during his time here, and he feels Ireland gave him the confidence to go to university, get a good education and grow. He now works in the Irish Times as a business journalist. And interestingly, one of the first stories he covered was the citizenship event in the Convention Centre here in Dublin. Here's Charlie's story. My name's Charlie Taylor. I'm originally from Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire in England, but I'm now a citizen of Ireland. I work for the Irish Times. I'm a journalist. I work on the business desk, mainly covering a lot of business, but also a lot of technology. When I first came to Ireland, you know, I suppose one of the first things I noticed was that everyone had a great education. For the first time, I think it made me think, oh, I could maybe go to college as well. It was something that had never occurred to me at all as a possibility, and it inspired me to. So it took me to places I don't think I would have necessarily have gone if I would have stayed in England. So it's one of those things I'm always very grateful for. The day I got my cert to say I was an Irish citizen kind of come as a surprise. It was just there in the post when I got home one afternoon. 
what came with the cert was this most beautiful letter that had echoed what had been said in citizenship ceremonies that had taken place in person about how welcome you were to Ireland and we wanted your culture to be part of our culture. In a way, it's what you would expect from Ireland. You know, it's beautiful, poetic, but at the same time, it was from a government department. So, you know, that's not the language you expect to see from them. So it was a wonderful moment. Becoming Irish, I think, makes me feel closer to my daughter. It's something I think she's proud of, even though she's only five and a half. She kind of sees it as something important, finds it exciting. You know, we can sit there and watch the rugby together and I can be an official Irish fan now rather than just a pretend one. And uh, I think it also makes me kind of feel closer to my past as well, because my granddad was from Mayo. So I almost kind of feel as though when I came over and moved to Ireland, it was almost a sort of completing the circle of me coming back. Home is very much Dublin. It's been my home for the last 30 years. It's great crack and yeah, I love living here. Thanks for that, Charlie. It's now time for a little bit of music from John Spillane. John is a two-time Meteor Award winner for best folk or trad act. He's one of the most accomplished songwriters in Ireland and his songs have been covered by Christy Moore, by Sharon Shannon, by Sean Keane, and by many, many others. Tonight, he's gonna to play a couple of songs for us, the first of which is The Dance of the Cherry Tree. Take it away there, John. Hi, everyone. It's Mr. John Spillane, Kjol Tor or Horkwig. I'm John Spillane. I'm a Cork musician, and I'd like to welcome everyone. Agus Kohardikus Moor, Leshna Koi Vila, Seranacha, Nua, Eranacha. Congratulations, everybody. Here's a song I wrote called The Dance of the Cherry Trees. Let me tell you about the cherry trees. Every April in our town, they put on the most outrageous clothes and they sing and they dance around. Hardly anybody sings or dances, hardly anybody dances or sings in this town that I call my own. You have to hand it to the cherry trees, and they seem to be saying to me anyway. You know, we've traveled all around the sun. You know, it's taken us one whole year. Well done, everyone. Well done. Cherry blossom in the air. Cherry blossom on the street Cherry blossom in your hair And a blossom at your feet You know we've travelled all around the sun You know it's taken us one whole year Well done everyone, well done On behalf of me and the cherry trees Well done Sometimes I think I'm getting old, not as young as I used to be. So it means even more to me to see the dance of the cherry trees. And they seem to be saying, is it only to me? You know, we've traveled all around the sun. You know, it's taken us one whole year. Well done, everyone. Well done. On behalf of me and the cherry tree. Well done. Well done, everyone. Congratulations, Kogardikos. Well done, everyone. That was lovely, John. Thank you. We'll hear more from John in a little while, but first it's time for another one of our new citizens who has kindly agreed to share their story this evening. Yassine Anelia is an Irish professional footballer who plays for Shelburne in the League of Ireland. Born in Morocco, he's originally from Casablanca. 
He moved to Ireland when he was eight years old and grew up in the Cordoff area of Blanchardstown. Yassine feels Ireland has given him a huge opportunity to become a professional footballer. And this is his story. Hi, my name is Yassine Anaya and now I'm a citizen of Ireland. The reason I came to Ireland was my mum's moved here. I had to kind of be with her at a young age. When I came here, I got into football and I found a platform that I need. As soon as I got here, I really, I just played outside my house, made some new friends. And obviously when I went to Cordoff Park, I played with some of the friends and that's where I caught the eye of Cordoff FC. I was very surprised of um, how welcoming people were, especially from a different country like Morocco. I just felt I was home as well. Football in is definitely challenging. You get a different aspect of football. It's not the same as where I played in the UK. It's a different style, it's a different environment, and you get different coaches that ask different things of you. Even when I've been here, I've seen a lot of work done for the community and the kids. It's definitely even good for me to see that as a young player coming up. I'm an Irish citizen now. I'm proud to finally say it. I've always been wanting to play for Ireland from such a young age, and I've, I feel like I've done that from on the 15s to on the 17s. And now, since I've got my citizenship, now I can continue and represent Ireland at a higher level. There's been a lot of criteria that I needed to require. Obviously, with the help of the FAI and my Irish football clubs, I've been able to get there. I feel like I'm, I'm home, I'm one of the people here, and I'm proud to be Irish. I can finally say, and I can finally put on a green shirt. Yassine, thanks for sharing your story. I would now like to introduce Mr. Justice Brian McMahon. Mr. Justice McMahon is a veteran of our citizenship ceremonies, and he will say a few words before leading you through the declaration, after which we will hear our national anthem. Feel free to sing along at home. Over to you, Judge. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored to be with you today to celebrate this important milestone in your lives and this most joyful occasion in the life of our country. Your presence today in such great diversity of origin is an affirmation of the essential values of our nation and the promise our state holds out to all our citizens. My role here today is a little bit different to what normally happens in the citizenship ceremonies. Normally, I would be speaking to perhaps a thousand people in the convention center or in the Glen Eagle Hotel in Killarney. But because of COVID, as the minister has rightly said, we are different today. But paradoxically, it is a privilege, a greater privilege in a sense for me, because now I am invited into 2,000 sitting rooms this evening to be with you. My role, uh, uh, it, uh, and even though we are meeting remotely, it is a privilege in such great diversity of origin and you have already completed your declarations and citizenship journey, and you have received your, your citizenship certificates. All that remains now is for you to make your declaration, your solemn pledges and declaration of your fidelity to the nation and loyalty to the state. And this is important. Not only does it provide an important emotional connection of solidarity to becoming an Irish citizen. And I will ask you to recite the declarations in a moment. I first of all want to say a couple of preliminary words. Over the past two decades, Ireland has becoming, become an increasingly diverse country. It has undergone profound changes in the profile of its population over that period, Ireland 
has welcomed people from many different countries and cultures. And as a nation, we have greatly benefited from their presence here in this country. As a country, we have been fortunate that we have not directly witnessed the events and actions that other states have experienced in recent times. We have all seen the terrible images that have resulted from intolerance, discrimination, disaffection, and dispossession. While I'm on this, I would like, as an aside, to congratulate the Minister for Justice on her recent humane decision in relation to the undocumented people in this country. It gives a great and needed opportunity to many who are living in this country for many years. It gives them an opportunity to regularize their position. It is indeed an enlightened and humane decision that is long overdue. It is therefore vitally important that we continue to keep integration to the fore when you take up your new residence. I urge you to gently assert yourselves in your new communities and you will be surprised what welcome you will find there. We are a nation of immigrants. We understand immigration and all the various problems that go with it. As citizens, you will share the legacy of our history and you will share the same rights and responsibilities as every other citizen of our country. That means, for example, that you may vote and decide on who will represent you in the various councils and in Parliament itself. And you may seek yourself to represent others. You should know that the highest office in the land is now open to you. I should say, you must be over 35 to run for president. With that goes, of course, the citizens, the duty of citizens to promote not just their own well-being and that of their family, but the healthy social, cultural and economic life of their communities, their towns, their cities and the country itself. You should respect and uphold our laws and be good citizens. As new citizens, you will contribute to the creation of a new, inclusive and diverse society. And when you make your declaration of fidelity to the state in a moment, do not forget your old country, your own people, your own traditions. Such memories are not contraband. So bring with you your songs, your music, and your stories. And in bringing your culture and traditions and your unique experiences to this country and joining them with ours, you will redefine what it means to be Irish and you will enrich our national life and heritage. Your presence here helps to consolidate our membership of the global family of nations. And it will make Ireland a stronger and a better place for all our citizens. As you embrace the ways and values of your new country, you must never forget the cultural influences that of your own homelands. These things are precious to us and are the things people in faraway lands associate most with our own country and our own immigrants. For when the Irish people traveled and settled around the globe, we brought with us 
the things that define us, our songs, our music, and our stories. So this love of home and tradition has been kept alive down through the generations. And as I say, I repeat, maintaining those traditions has not diminished our presence, nor will it diminish your presence in this, your new country. Respect and embrace the new traditions you find in your new country and see how we can learn from each other because we too have a rich culture. I urge you to read our literature, listen to our music, embrace our games and traditions. As new citizens of our country, you have an opportunity to realize your ambitions and to achieve your dreams. We will all be the better people for it. You will have to identify for yourself how you can contribute best to your community. There is no single formula. Ask yourself what you are good at. Ask yourself what your community needs. Offer yourself and make the suggestions and, and introduce yourselves and you will be welcomed. After this ceremony today, although I have lived all my life in this country, and my parents and my grandparents before me, it is salutary to remember that I will have no more rights than you will. Under the Constitution, all citizens are equal. The new are equal to the old. We have no second class or half citizens. You are, as well as I am, fully entitled to the protection of the Constitution, and in particular, the right to equality under the Constitution itself. I urge you to buy the Constitution, it's a small book. I urge you to read it and study it so that you know the legal system that you live in and that you know the rights and protections that are afforded to you under the articles, starting with Article 40. And so I offer you my warmest congratulations, Kokhardikus Om Khri, on the commitment you have made on the choice you have made. You have worked hard to attain this citizenship. And when you leave today, we must all work hard to sustain it. When I address a group like you, and when I have a thousand faces in front of me, it is a very humiliating experience because in front of me, I see a thousand stories. You have not come here easily. You were not dropped out of a parachute into Ireland. You have backstories. You have had difficulties. You still have separations. I understand that. And each of you have your own stories. So I am humbled that I am now in your sitting rooms, in your living rooms. And I invite you, as I am bound to do here tonight, to stand and to recite the declaration with me. By making your declaration of fidelity to the nation and loyalty to the state, you affirm the values which underpin our republic and you renew those values in each of us. Now it's important, and I say this when it's a live experience, that we proceed together. When I have a thousand of you in front of me, I have to treat, treat you like a choir. I am a choir master, that we will say it all together. 
It's a little bit more difficult tonight, but I'm sure you can, with a little bit of imagination and with a bit of timing and a bit of obedience to me, your conductor, we will get it right. I'll tell you what we're going to do. First, you have the document in front of you, and the first thing is I will say, when we organize it, I will say, I, the word I, and I will pause. And that is when you say out loud your name, your own name. And some of you have long names, and some of you have short names, and we will wait till the long names finish. And then I will proceed to the next word, and I will say, of. And that is a prompt for you to say out loud your address, your permanent address, where you live in this country. After that, we are all together saying the same thing. And I will say it, a line, and I will pause, and you say it out loud in your sitting room, but close your eyes and you will hear 999 or 1,999 1, other voices in various parts of the country saying the same thing. So let's, as a mark of solidarity, and the minister is listening, remember? She is listening. Now, let us begin. I, of, having applied to the Minister for Justice, for a certificate of naturalization, hereby solemnly declare my fidelity to the Irish nation and my loyalty to, to the state. I undertake to faithfully observe the laws of the state and to respect its democratic values. Congratulations to you all, our newest citizens of Ireland. Today marks the end of your migrant journey and the start of your new life as an Irish citizen in your own homes. Ireland welcomes you and encourages you to contribute to your new country to help her build up our great nation together. On behalf of the Irish government, I formally welcome you and wish you the very best as you share in our countries. Now, you might please join in me in our country's national anthem. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Justice McMahon, and indeed the Garda Band. I think you might see uh, why we enjoy having both a part of these events. Uh, our next contribution is from another one of our new Irish citizens, and, and I must say one of the other lovely things this evening is, is behind the scenes when you're not seeing us. This large screen beside me usually has uh, a, an abundance of your own faces on it, and it's lovely seeing people, people waving out at us. And now we want to hear from another one of those, uh, Kerry Gordon. Kerry moved to Ireland 23 years ago. She's originally from Sussex. In her 20s, she had an urge to move to Ireland, and she now lives in Wicklow with her daughter Molly 
and their two retired greyhounds, Nina Simone and Otis Redding. This is their story. Hello, my name is Kerry Gordon and I'm originally from Sussex in England and I am now a citizen of Ireland. In the 90s, late 90s, I was living in Southampton. Irish culture was coming over to England. Riverdance, when it came over, exploded. For me, I felt this deep connection to Celtic music. Celtic music is very set in nature. I find peace and grounding in places like this, and I think that's part of it. Molly is Irish, she was born here, and it became very apparent to me that I wanted to be on the same passport as her. I feel more connected to Molly now that I have the Irish citizenship. Greyhounds are my absolute passion. I got my blue girl, who I named Nina Simone. I got my black boy, who I called Otis Redding. And they're cheeky characters and they're wonderful. I'm a dual citizen. I'm both British and Irish. That's very important to anybody in this process. This is my home. I have my, my daughter. I have my two rescue greyhounds. There's a community here. I think Ireland stole my heart the day I drove off the ferry. I love the people, the sense of humour. I love the fact that, you know, when you're here and someone says, how are you? It's not a question you're not supposed to answer. I love the fact that for the first few months here, I had no idea what a hot press was and nobody would tell me. And then I found out about the immersion, which is a national thing that you're not allowed to keep the immersion on. That's why I love Ireland, it's things like that I love. I've given a lot to this country and this country's given a lot to me and little did I know I'd be here nearly 23 years later and be an Irish citizen, so you never know what's going to happen. Thanks for that, Kerry. And now for something a little bit different. Uh, John Spillan has done another song for us this evening. This time it's an Irish traditional song called O Ro Shedava Awalya. Over to you. O Ro Shedava Awalya, O Ro Shedava Awalya, O Ro Shedava Awalya. Van Bull and Verbe are grack to be in even the who have ra shell of mirror. Studio the Lishna Golis, or Shedava, a Walia, or Shedava, a Walia, or Shedava, a Walia. Congratulations, Slán. That was great. Thanks to John. That's nearly it for this evening. Uh, but before we finish, I'd like to thank all of our contributors this evening. Minister Helen McEntee, Mr Justice McMahon, Yasin, Kerry and Charlie, and of course John Spillan. I would also like to thank Epic for hosting us here this evening and the great job that they've done, along with the Garda Band for the wonderful music as ever, and Wilderness Ireland for the use of their beautiful imagery of Ireland. And I'd really like to thank the staff of the department, including the citizenship staff in Tipperary Town and my own transparency team here in Dublin for pulling together this wonderful event this evening. Most importantly, we'd like to thank all of you. Ireland really is proud to have you as citizens. 
We have a traditional saying, or shanokal in Irish, Ninyart gakur lakela. This translates as there's strength in unity, or indeed, we are better together, which is particularly apt today. Each one of you is one of us now, and we are all the richer for that. To close tonight, we have video messages from you telling us what, is, what it has meant to you to become a citizen of Ireland. Gurum Mila Mahagov, Ihoi, Agus Aris, Kogarjikus Okrilev. Thank you and good night. I have lived in Ireland for 48 years. Next year, in the census, I will proudly tick the box marked Irish for the very first time. Karavamila Mahagat. Thank you. It's a great honour for me to become an Irish citizen. It's one of my dreams. I love Ireland. I pray for Ireland. God bless Ireland. Hi everyone, my name is Bhupinder Singh. I want to say thanks to the Department of Justice and Irish government to give me this opportunity. I become Irish citizen and I we promise to you I was loyal with Ireland and I be a loyal with Ireland. Thank you so much. Thanks million again. Thank you so much. Take care. Hello everyone. Uh, the most frightening point on my path of becoming an Irish citizen uh, was when I told my colleagues at work that I had become one. Uh, a few days later, they surprised me at a local pub, well, where else, and uh, they gave me this box full of Irish gifts as an act of their warm welcome of me becoming a member of the Irish pack. Hi, this is Aryan. I am here to thank you for making me an Irish citizen and I wish you all of you Happy Christmas. Slonja. I'm proud to be a part of this welcoming, proud and supporting Irish society and proud to contribute and excel as an individual by being better and the best version of myself continuously. I am honoured to be an Irish citizen. Kojan the Heron. After over 45 years in Ireland passionately promoting STEM subjects as a science educator for secondary school students, I'm delighted and proud to officially join my family, Mos Aranak Aranak, Gorum Agat a Aramakanti. To me, becoming an Irish citizen means formally honouring a significant part of my identity, my second home, my husband, and my children. I mean sharing with my family, friends, and colleagues the privilege of calling myself Irish. So being Irish for me means being connected to my past and to my cultural heritage. Ireland is a land that has shaped me, influencing my life before I was even born. And now living here, working here, and making my life here, I feel like those connections are stronger than ever. Emerald Island is rich and resilient. People inspire me so much. I'm happy here with the life I'm creating. I found a loving partner, a group big cat. I work on my new ambitious project, things that would not have happened if I hadn't decided to stay. It wasn't an easy transition, but that's what being an Irish citizen is about, isn't it? Overcoming challenges while having the crack. Gorav Mahagat, Department of Justice. Thank you to the Minister of Justice for granting the citizenship and become an Irish means a lot to me. I'll give my best to build a strong community together. Hi, being a new Irish citizen, this is a happy day of my life. Finally, I can call this beautiful country my home now. Thank you, Ireland, for welcoming me and thank you to the Ministry of Justice for granting me this citizenship. Good evening. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for allowing me to be an Irish citizen. I thank you so much for giving me a home. Thank you. God bless you and God bless Ireland. Amen. To you, I can congratulate you, Claire, to all the awesome moment in the show Ryan's life and my hair and my hair and while in the small way, Yenov, who then tangled with us, August and Ireland at Hiver, a husband, me carried, got tackled, Helen, got me married. I'm honoured and happy to be an Irish citizen. It is a new chance on my life. God bless Ireland.
Come on, Ireland. Being Irish means having a great extended family. It means uh, playing GAA with my six-year-old son. It means playing water polo with mates, uh, Guinness. It means open sea water swimming. And it means being very thankful and uh, supporting a rugby team in a green jersey. Hi, my name is Ghassan al Dahoud. I am from Palestine. I am very happy and honored to become an Arab citizen. This is added greatly to my life and my future. It has been a great privilege for me to become an Irish citizen. I have lived on the island of Ireland for over 37 years. My wife and adult children are Irish, so it is a great honor to also now be an Irish citizen. I'm Gustav Fischer from Westport, County Mayo. Irish citizenship means I'm now a part of a proud Irish community, to which I will always strive to give my very best for my new, lovely home country. My name is Goodness Original from Nigeria. 15 years in Ireland, I want to say thank you to Minister for Justice for giving me the opportunity to be a citizen of this great country. I can now vote and give back to this great country. Thank you. May God bless you. God Maha God. Bye. Hi, my name is Greg Neild. I've been living here in Ireland for the last 26 years and I'm honoured and delighted to be made an Irish citizen. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Dula Bodo. Being an Irish citizen is like coming home from a long journey. So all I can say, thanks to Ireland. Kore Mahakur. Thanks for everyone. Bye. I'm delighted and feel privileged to be an Irish citizen. Gharma Adahat. It's been three years trying for the naturalization certificate. I'm much obliged to Deputy Helen McCanty, Deputy Heather Humphrey, and the entire team for making a paramount effort to clear the applications of backlog. Hearty congratulations to everyone taking part in the ceremony and becoming new Irish citizens. Salanche. Konastatu. Become an Irish citizen means from now on you can go to your local polling station to vote your tickets whenever there is an election coming up. That means a lot to us and our family. Golamak. I love this country, it's now in my heart and though I sometimes like to go away to visit family and friends, Ireland is the place I want to stay. I'm proud to be Irish. People welcome you with open arms, a cup of tea and a wee whiskey, a fiddle plays, a sing song starts, feet taped to the floor, all part of the crack. It's a longing that keeps you coming back. I'm proud to be Irish. Mother Nature's most beautiful creation of all. The stunning island at the wild Atlantic edge, where cow's parsley skirts the Hawthorne hedge, where you can have four seasons in one day, encapsulated my soul. Who wouldn't want to stay? Is er nach mei. Right. To be Irish for me, it means my second family and my second home. Slancha. Ireland is a beautiful and peaceful place to be. So becoming an Irish citizen is a dream comes true. The best thing that happens to my life. Thank you. This is my Irish DNA, mainly Cork and Dublin. These are my two Irish Olympian daughters carrying the flag. Now, thanks to my Irish citizenship, I can prove I'm Irish too. Yay! Hi, my name's John Murray. I'm originally from Glasgow, Scotland. I have lived in Ireland for the last 30 years in County Down with my Irish family and now I'm proud to be an Irish citizen. Hello, today is a special day uh, in my life to be Irish. Uh, I'm so happy. Uh, I love uh, Ireland and thanks. Being an Irish citizen is an honour and a privilege and I'm proud to be part of a community who is very friendly, open-minded and full of life despite difficult circumstances. This is my home now. Grandma Haggard. I'd like to thank the Irish government and the people of Ireland for having bestowed me the highest honour of the country becoming a Irish citizen. Thank you very much. Graha Haggard. I grew up in Ireland, I've made a lot of long-term friends in Ireland, I've learned the language, I know the culture. Ireland is basically my home and that's why being an Irish citizen is important to me. 
Hi, my name is Maria Baboy. I'm here 19 years and I'm so glad that I became an Irish citizen. Thank you so much for accepting and sending me my passport. Thanks a million. Dear Gwit, becoming an Irish uh, gives you that extra sense of belonging. Of Maragot. Uh, hello and uh, thanks for the state to accept me as an Irish citizen. I'm so happy to be an Irish citizen and I will be loyal to the state like always. I hope I have more time to speak, but thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you to uh, Minister McEntee and the Government of Ireland for granting me Irish citizenship. Uh, thank you. It's been a very dark year for me. I lost my dad due to COVID. So this piece of news of citizenship has been uh, pure joy and delight for myself and my family. Uh, I came here 17 years ago as a student. I uh, became a doctor here in Ireland. I became an adult here and I couldn't have chosen a better place than Ireland because my journey was around Irish people who are the kindest, uh, caring and grounded people uh, on the entire planet and it gives me great pleasure to be a part of that society and fabric and uh, it gives me great honor to call people like Bono, Oscar Wilde, Mary Robinson as my fellow uh, Irish uh, countrymen and women. So thank you once again and uh, congratulations to everyone and God bless you all and God bless Ireland. Thank you. Hello, my name is Munmun Shaha. I'm originally from India and I have been living in Ireland uh, since 10 to 11 years. And uh, I have uh, recently got my naturalization certificate and I'm very happy to be a part of Irish community. Thank you very much. Dear it, good evening, Mimbrama. My name is Nertila Sela. I've become an Irish citizen this year. I'm very happy, very grateful. I'll cherish every moment. Thank you very much for your support. Hello, my name is Nina, and I'd like to say a big thank you to you for allowing me Irish citizenship. My husband is Irish by birth, my daughter is Irish by adoption, and now finally I get to join them and Irish by marriage. Thank you. This is a land rich with language and a moment for which I only have very simple words. Thank you. It's good to be home. Just want to say it's a great honour to be uh, made into an Irish citizen. It's something that I've always wanted to do and uh, I look forward to bringing something to this great country. Thank you. It's a great honour to me to be an Irish citizen. I first came to Ireland in 2011 and I was immediately welcomed uh, by the Irish people I met who also gave me a great support. I'm very happy to be part of the Irish community. Thank you, Ireland. Becoming an Irish citizen means I can now vote in the country where my children were born. Becoming an Irish citizen, I can vote now. I like to think I can express my opinion and most important, I can engage in third level education and be on a credit counselor. Hi everybody. Congratulations to all of us on finally becoming the citizens of this wonderful country we all call home. I wish you all the best to all of you and best of luck. Hello, my name is Sheldon. I recently became an Irish citizen. Um, I'm originally from South Africa and I find it very difficult to put into words the feeling of finally getting my citizenship. So I'd just like to say thank you to the Minister of Justice and I'd also just like to give a mention to my little boy Jesse as well who also gets to ex share the experience with me. Thank you, have a great Christmas. I spent half my life living in Ireland and embracing the Irish lifestyle and culture. I'm very honoured to be granted Irish citizenship as I now feel I have the same right as everybody else on this island in terms of voting for example. Thank you very much. Nolik Shona. Hi, my name is Ubaidullah Khan. I'm from Pakistan. I have recently become an Irish citizen. It has been a great honor to be an Irish citizen. It, it was a long journey and finally it's over. Thank you, Ireland. 
My name is Sarah Ose and I am proud to be Irish. I have come this far to be here today. It means a lot to me and my four children are Irish. I feel like we are home now. Thanks to the Irish people for welcoming me into Ireland. They have been so good to me and my family. I am so grateful to be here today to celebrate with you all. My name is Ifani Maduka Ufren. Um, today is a very important day in my life, becoming an Irish citizen. I knew when I was coming to Ireland, I knew I was coming to a place I call my home. Um, this country has done so much that my bad country did not offer me. When I was born, my parents told me that they were alive because of the Irish missionaries, the Red Cross, uh, that gave them food during the Nigerian Civil War, the African War. The Irish missionaries are the reason why they are still alive and they were able to get back to me, get back to me anyway. So since then, I have never stopped loving this beautiful country. So when I came into Ireland, I knew I was coming to a place I call my, my home. I went to school, I had my degree, I had my master's, I have an MBA in business administration from this country. And then, um, get fully employed, contributing my own quota to this great country. So today, the Irish government had made it official that I become a citizen, a part of them. It's a great honor. Um, I, I thank the people of Ireland um, for giving me this opportunity and privilege to become uh, part of them and this country be my home. I will continue to be a good ambassador. I will continue to uphold the, the laws of this great country. Thank you so much, Ireland. Thank you. Thank you so much. Being an Irish citizen means for me better quality of life, more opportunities in the future, and happy family. Thank you. After living in the US most of my life and growing up in Germany, living in Ireland for the past 10 years has been the best years of my life. I'm so excited to finally be a citizen with all the wonderful people that live here. After nine years and five months living here, I am now an Irish citizen. I am so proud. Thank you, Ireland. I am very grateful for all the achievement over the years through the Irish people. Right from my secondary school days in Nigeria, coming over to Ireland, I've achieved a master's degree and a PhD. And now with my citizenship, I have found a home of Kedmila Folcharo. Kedmila Mahagod, August Buhas Ledia.